One question I get on YouTube regularly or by email from a listener or if I see a listener out and about I was getting my uh, oil changed in the truck the other day and a listener came up and uh, wanted to chat about the status of gun litigation as Illinoisans continue to wait for whatever happens out of the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for the 7th District and also out of the Illinois Supreme Court. And so all I can say right now is we're in a holding pattern uh, when it comes to uh, the outcome of the state court and the federal appeals court for the status of Illinois' gun and magazine ban. That's not the only thing going on. Of course, we've tracked the trajectory of the state cases that went up to the Illinois Supreme Court, uh, challenging the gun and magazine ban on grounds that it violates equal protections by carving out police and other individuals uh, having the ability to purchase and possess certain semi-automatic firearms and magazines, while regular citizens aren't allowed that under law. Uh, Again, the Illinois Supreme Court has that case still on it, and a couple of things could happen there, of course. You've got whatever outcome the outcome is going to be, uh, but also whether or not the uh, plaintiffs, State Representative Dan Calkins and his attorney, uh, Jerry Stocks, are they going to pursue the questions of uh, conflicts of interest with two of the Illinois Supreme Court justices that received to their campaign contributions a, a million dollars each from Governor J.B. Pritzker and six figures from House Speaker Chris Emanuel Welch, who are defendants in the gun ban challenge. So the Illinois Supreme Court still very much has that. We don't know when they're going to release an opinion. But then you have in federal court, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals with cases from the Southern District of Illinois and the Northern District of Illinois challenging Illinois' gun and magazine ban. And in the Northern District, several municipalities that have uh, gun and magazine bans in place as well. They heard that well over a month ago and we're still waiting. Not much action in that particular court uh, as well as we uh, look at the docket entry here. Uh, I mean, the latest thing in the case, uh, which is the consolidated case, um, uh, Barnett v. Raul, uh, the latest uh, in this is uh, on uh, July 10th. And we went over this, how uh, the, an amicus brief from uh, John uh, Cuccinelli is being denied. And uh, that's the latest in the case. Again, on July 10th, the uh, uh, Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. But you have other cases that uh, are very much still uh, fresh and moving forward. We talked with attorney Thomas Mag about uh, his case uh part of the consolidated cases uh that are in the seventh circuit court of appeals and he's trying to get a review on the vagueness issue back in the southern district on that case but mag now has another case that's in federal court challenging illinois firearm owner identification card and the state statutes that now limits the ability for Illinois citizens to file litigation against state laws challenging uh, constitutional infringement, only allowing people to file lawsuits in Sangamon or Cook County instead of any of the other 102 counties in Illinois. So Mag's first charge in that case is that his client uh, was denied a firearm owner identification card for a previous nonviolent cannabis charge. Uh, so being denied that, he, he says that that violates uh, the Constitution uh, right of the Second Amendment, uh, so a Second Amendment challenge there. But then his second charge in this case out of Madison County, uh, Myers v. Kelly, uh, Mag's second charge char- challenges the constitutionality of that measure that limits where people can sue. So we had this case uh, in state court, but uh, the Illinois uh, State Police moved it to federal courts. And where are we at in that? In the Southern District, if you look at the docket, uh, Myers v. Kelly, it was filed uh, about, you know, 10 days ago. And uh, it goes on to to show that, uh, indeed, it was transferred to federal court from Madison County. Uh, it's got the, uh, the, the, the charging uh, documents and so on. Uh, but the latest is that... Uh, there's a motion for extension of time to file an answer by Brendan Kelly. So uh, Brendan Kelly is uh, the the director of Illinois State Police, and he's looking to um, extend the time to file an answer. And this is uh, something some people may see as uh, an effort to try to um, 
delay the process. Uh, so again, looking at the docket here, uh, the Southern District of Illinois Court, Myers v. Kelly, uh, it was filed uh, in federal court uh, July 21st after being transferred from Madison County. Uh, now it's uh, the latest is that uh, there was an extension to, to file an answer uh, from Brendan Kelly. So we'll watch this case closely as well. Uh, so that's just some of the latest where we're at with uh, litigation against Illinois gun laws. But what about the ongoing fight over whether or not uh, certain types of metal components of firearms that aren't completely finished are legal or not. Uh, that ATF rule was challenged. There was an injunction, but now the uh, U.S. Supreme Court restoring that rule temporarily. But uh, the, the owner of Defense Distributed, a manufacturer of uh, tools that allow people to mill and finish metal pieces of firearms. Uh, Cody Wilson, he was recently on a program and he talked about how advanced the technology is and what their ultimate goal is. Uh, something he says is to uh, really mesh the First Amendment rights of getting access to computer-assisted digital files and the Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms. So stay tuned. We'll get to that next here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. Follow me anywhere. Just search Bishop on air.